<laughs> there he is. <laughs> there he is. Welcome everyone to the Film Vault. That's Anderson. I'm Brian Bishop, your host for today. Oh, we got uh, we're gonna line up on some films, Anderson. Mm. Big movies. This is one of the bigger uh, movie release weeks in uh, recent history. It's the one we've all been waiting for. That's Brian. right. It's the big one. Did you Barbenheimer? I Barbenheimer. Yeah. Or did you high uh, op and Barbie? I yeah. op and bar. Uh, okay. op, op indeed. Yeah. I, 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 opened la- I opened first. I, I opted to opt for This is so stupid. I watched I Oppenheimer, left. and then I watched Barbie uh, shortly thereafter. And if you watch them too close... To the Oppenheimer. Harbor. <laughs> you can get some uh, whiplash if you don't break that Oppenheimer hymen first. Interesting. That's what I heard. It seems like it's insane to do both on the same day. On the same thing. day, which is what people people were doing that. It's what like a I TikTok the, thing. The film fit? Oh, God. That, what the TikTok? Yeah. What's yeah. the matter with you? Speaking of TikTok, we watched a little... follow us on TikTok. We watched a little TikTok. That's right, we yeah. did. TikTok. TikTok's a character in the, uh, the 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 film that we watched with a number of you called Return to Oz. Return to Oz was viewed by us on the uh, monthly watch along for Patreon supporters at the ten lo- ten dollar and up level. And there's and a character on there named TikTok. That's what we're is. alluding to. I must say, it was a very successful. What do you mean? How uh, was it the successful? Watch-along. I mean, it was fun. I, I it was we, fun. we did a Sunday night, and we had uh, fewer uh, viewers than normal. I think Sunday night uh, is family night for a lot of people, right? That's family tough. dinners, why, why not? We're, we're experimenting. Film, we're still, film Vault is family. We're still trying. It's true. Thank film you, up, film Thank up, you. Fam, family of dinner night. Hey, you know, let the kids tune in. We'll watch a little uh, right. whatever it is that we're going to watch. That, that was the, probably the most kid-appropriate film we've seen. Might be doing a sleep Oh, Head. <laughs> Razorhead was very kid-like. It's awesome. There was a child involved That's throughout. Right. What? A calf head. Headed child. We're going to be doing a sleepaway camp, I think, possibly next as soon as next Ooh, month. Speaking of appropriate for children. Yes. Sleepaway camp. And uh, Angela. <laughs> we're going to be watching a little Angela. Hey, yeah, so uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer, uh, as well as Club Dread, thanks to Rex Fisher. Indeed. Which is even more whiplash over there. So. Yeah, I don't know where to go with these. Well, we should probably yeah, go. Yeah, come and go. We should probably go down the route of like you know like talking about them. Let's start with a little fan fiction. Little fan fiction compiled by the Mitch Burns. Bailiff on Reddit saw Oppenheimer, enjoyed it throughout, and it flew by. What? However, I don't know if that second part's true. <laughs> once it ended, I felt like I got duped. I never cared about Oppenheimer, his relationships, or security clearance. Hey. I guess I just love the bomb. A lot of truth to everything he's saying right there. It was a, a beautiful, w- hollow magic trick. A weirdly low stakes movie about maybe the highest stakes thing that's occurred in the last it's true. years. That's a sleight of hand right there. Yeah. Uh, more, Oppenheimer. More on that in a bit. More Undoubtedly, on. bears rewatching. There's a heaviness to the whole thing due to what is probably Oppenheimer's own gravitas. My God, uh, can you imagine rewatching this? Born out by watching interviews with him. Murphy is naturally on screen a lot. It's killing. Editing is uh, very good. <laughs> Murphy's an odd way to... Killing but, the neighbor. Uh, I, I was taken to like uh, a little uh, uh, Robocop for a moment. I'm like, what's he talking about? Sergeant Murph right. over here? Oh, I thought of uh, Eddie Murphy, and that was even oh. stranger. <laughs> I don't imagine Eddie Murphy in this role. Uh, I'd have to watch it again for the cinematography. Uh, there are sequences that jump around in time so much the film feels like a trailer. The sound levels in the theater were a bit low for me, so the dialogue did not get its day in court. I don't think you're the only one. More on that later. Mm. There are definitely some tasty exchanges between characters. Casting is very good. Sometimes I think Nolan is too cerebral for even me. Oh, look at this guy patting himself on the back. Who's this? And I liked Tree of Life. Oh, I'm with you there. Was the casting good or was the casting elaborate? The casting was like, hey, all of Hollywood, you're about to be on strike. Come on out and play with us. There's 150 speaking parts in this movie. There may be, yeah. Yeah, very Wes Anderson. <laughs> let me get, let me get all used, that I can. He used these characters. Yeah. And their nips at times. There you go. That's right. I mean, let's not get there yet, because I mean, I was a little upset by that. Same. Oppenheimer, yeah. FET score. Yeah. What do you think? I'm going 83. Yeah, 9 out of 10. 87. There you go. 87. Adam Kaplan on Facebook. Barbie. Legit Barbie. one of the best movies in the last five years. What in the fuck? Legit. It was funny. Legit. It was heartwarming. And its ability to be a commentary about what it means to be a woman in the uh, in the world was extraordinary. Oh, Matt care. Walsh should go see this movie. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Oh, That's the new answer. Yeah. You give oh, the Matt Walsh. Right. What is a woman? Uh, Barbie. 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 Barbie is a woman. Oh, that would have been a perfect answer. Serious. He'd Barbie. Barbie love that though. Yeah, I agree. Would. Yeah, yeah. I agree. But she has no lady bits. 
I think he might come back with that. Yeah. If movies going forward are only going to be based on pre-existing IP or toys, this is the bar that all filmmakers need to strive for. Mm, really? What do we think the FET score is for Barbie? We think it's higher or lower than Oppenheimer? I hate to say it, but I bet it's higher. It might be higher. It is higher. 89. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you guys, come on. You guys, you're better than that. SLC Movie Junkie on Twitter. Pre-screening of Talk to Me from A24. It was great. Really intense. Sort of like the monkey's paw with possession. Australian movie. Yeah, it's the, it's the one with the little token uh, and they conjure spirits. Indeed. I uh, assigned you a movie called Talk to Me years ago. Mm -hmm. Colin Cheadle playing a uh, disc jock. I don't remember it at all. It's very good. It's good I enjoyed that movie. I enjoyed it. I was kidding. Jeremy Chappelle on Facebook. Bro <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn 45. Limited scope. Solid performances. What is this, sir? Recommend it. Brooklyn 45. Short to the point. Is that a prequel to Brooklyn Nine-Nine? No, it's, it has nothing to do with it. Oh. Joel Hecht. Hecht. Who knows? On Facebook, they clone Tyrone. Oh, on yeah. Netflix, a better black sci-fi horror comedy than The Blackening. Agreed. Funny, fast-paced, original, and I legitimately did not know what was going to happen next. John Boyega crushing it once again, and it might be my favorite Jamie Foxx uh, role I've ever seen. Yeah, indeed. Which doesn't say a whole lot because I'm not a big <clears throat> fan of the man. <coughs> oh, yeah. We're going to be talking about that maybe as early as next week. I think they clone Tyrone. It is, uh, it's on Netflix, which is weird because it's much better than a Netflix movie should be. Mm. Interesting. <coughs> and uh, right. you'll have to come with uh, Jamie Foxx health updates. Why was that? Was worse, than, worse than we all thought. What's that? Jamie Foxx. He was in the hospital. Oh, no. Why? Dude, he didn't really say other than there was a video a few days ago uh, of the first time since he was released from the hospital, and he looks very pale. Oh, now I feel pat. I, much checked, thinner. I checked with Matt Walsh. He had the COVID uh, virus uh, shot. Uh, it had a bad reaction. Ah, uh, are you bringing it back to Matt Walsh here? No, I'm actually serious. That Matt Walsh, not notwithstanding, that is a popular conspiracy theory. About oh, is it? He got the booster shot and had a bad reaction. Oh, did he? Is that actually? No, I, think it's, oh, okay. I don't know. It's true. I just know that it's being passed around. Speaking uh, of bad reactions, certain websites. Uh, you got no reaction. Uh, are, we, are we? Are we still doing? We are done. Goodbye, by uh, the Mitch Burns. Thank, Thank you. you, Avery. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, listeners, for letting us know what you're watching. It's always interesting to hear what you are watching. I am a little disappointed, though. I didn't hear anyone talking about feels feels good, man. About Pepe the Frog. Oh, I I saw feels good, man. All right, you want to talk about that? Uh, your experience with that in a in a minute. I, I, I definitely want to hear your. I critique. felt very good about it. I realized that uh, having seen it now, I was at sort of ground zero, I guess, pun intended, based on where Pepe goes, of the whole Pepe creation. I guess we're just going to do this now. He's just plowing you forward. No, he's so we're just going for when he has to do wealth look fashions. Oh my God! Why? Right. Why is that? Why is, what is that? Did you say sixty seconds? I said, no, I said, like, we'll get to that in a second. Oh, oh they yeah, said yeah. 60 no, I seconds. Wanted, I want to hear it. Oh, it, and, sure. oh, okay. But I thought you said, give me 60 seconds. <coughs> for those watching on YouTube, yes, yes. speaking of um, <clears throat> not much of a reaction, Brian looks like he's about to do some CGI work. That's true. I'm, I'm being motion captured. <laughs> and uh, this is what I uh, and Avery both walked into. Uh, I'm here the new the, Gollum. The Film Vault Studios. <laughs> they didn't want to do so much uh, They didn't want to do so much CGI, so they got me to do it. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight. I have, I have some back here. One, two, three, nine. I think you got nine there. Yeah. So you know those, those sci-fi movies where they plug androids in and into their head? And they, they do the do cheesy shot head. where the eyes open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian's got nine of those in his head right now. Hello, Anderson. Yeah. Shall we pod? Brian. Shall we play a pod? And this is, uh, I guess, in, in, so it's for the MRI. They put that on every time they give you an MRI? No, that's the only time I ever had it. I think hmm. it's pre biopsy specific do you like the look i haven't noticed i don't look at myself very often i'll tell you what's annoying is this right here on my glasses it's kind of pressing on uh, it. you didn't ask him to like make maybe that make was it. like shit no i should they should have yeah i wish they had moved it millimeter at a time but uh who am i to stand in the way of medical medical uh, advancements do you think if you're cool enough you could get this this look to take off Oh, if I was cool enough, absolutely. I'm not cool enough. Like you could go out, or maybe just this feed here. Yeah. yeah. Like people would see it and be like, what, hey, yo, what are those things? Your boy B, you have to get my app, see? Like Brian was saying, get him, get him like hooked up to Bluetooth, so whatever song's playing in the yeah. environment, it's just just pulsing to the... Did so, they give you any uh, any any color choices other than the uh, the the bleached out yellow no. look? It I looks like they've been all, sitting in the sun too I long. I feel like it's all they got. Um, like if I was Connor for real, I could make this take off. It looks like a bully was sucking sucrets back in the day and just started <laughs> throwing them at you, and they stuck. That is a very specific reference. Or lifesavers, I guess. I guess, yeah. I mean, call it lifesavers, yeah. 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 All right.
Why would they call? This looks like you took the feet off some electronics and just glued them to it. It does, or like yeah. the bottom of <laughs> it looks like, like uh, very low budge, like yeah, sci-fi. The bottom of like uh, like chair, like kitchen yeah. chairs, and yes. they have those little rubber the skin things. Yeah, yeah, so you don't. Yeah, and you got to sleep with those things. I know. I can't is, even is Christy going to try and get uh, freaky tonight with it? Can't what? They're, they're going to know. Like Mr. Bishop, what have you been up to? Like, Nothing. <laughs> no, but she might like. What if they can see? Kind of pretend like she's with a droid for oh, tonight. Sure. You know what I mean? Oh, change things up. Yeah. yeah. Turn off the lights. She can kind of paw around up there, like. Throw on sunglasses. He's Terminator. All of a sudden, I hear in my ear, beep for me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Brian. Uh, All right, let's. Uh, let, I guess talk. Uh, let's let's hear about Avery's uh, little flick fashion because uh, last good, last week I was talking on and I was going on and on and on about a movie that's now a couple years old that I tracked down called Feels Good Man. I do not think you oversold it. Okay, good. Very good. enjoyable. Wow. It was quick. I think it was what ninety five minutes. Yeah, and it goes down smooth, and it goes down pretty quick. It goes down smooth. There's almost uh, like a solid and pretty defined three acts to it, too. So I'd it just kind of, so. it's nice. So even if you're one of those very ADHD people and you need like to break things up, there's a very, you could do this in 30-minute chunks if, if you had if to. You ha- if you like you're only used to watching episodes of yes, things. Yes, if I your brain has been melted. Listening to this, though, they like the films. They like the movies. They, they watch yeah. films, right? So Very enjoyable. But yeah, Avery's absolutely right. And you do get a better understanding of the creators as well as the, the destroyers with each act, I think. Yes, so. and it keeps it continues to escalate in ways that you wouldn't expect. And evolve in new, yeah. And it's really hard to even imagine how it gets to where it gets to, but it does, and then just keeps going. Because at the outset, when you meet the guy, you're going, how, does, how do we end up with the insurrection? <laughs> how does this end with that? <coughs> the the teenage girls that uh, appropriated them. Pee-pee, yes. Pee- appropriated pee I mean, that was almost too good to be true, right? It was so odd. And Do you think that might have been cooked a little I bit? I don't think. The internet's too weird for that. It's too weird to not And then be. they turned on them as well? And they made them feel even worse about these incels, feel even worse about themselves? That completely tracks with me, uh, of them invading <laughs> that, that space. Because I, cause so what I realized watching this movie was that I was on 4chan right around the time this was created, because I remembered Pepe, but I didn't realize I literally was on probably within uh, months of him you know, being so, proliferating. Yeah, you saw the first iteration of Pepe. Yeah, back well, when the it was... the second, really. Be, he, yeah. Right after he got stolen from the... Or, or repurposed from the creator. Yes, when it was from still... Boys Club. When it was still, I guess, in good spirits, where it was just, oh, this is kind of fun and encap- encapsulates stupid internet culture and enjoying the little stupid minutia in life, the whole feels good man. Uh... But then I kind of left 4chan because I, I got a life and oh, come on. got very confused Man. by how this... I was equally confused of how did Pepe get turned into this alt-right Nazi Bin Laden shit? Because when I saw it, it was just like the silly little comics. Right. And then, you know, d- a decade down the line, he's being used with Nazis and, you know, Storm of the Capitol. And it was baffling to me. So I really liked it from that perspective as somebody who was kind of plugged into the internet heavily at that time period to sort of see that charting like out context yeah and to Personal, sort of see firsthand context i guess in a bizarre world maybe what i could have become if i had just leaned into that internet culture and just forsaken nah. real life uh yeah i real mean they, people it's interesting too that that community really does believe that they got trump elected like they are giving themselves credit for that. yeah and i don't even know if i fully disagree with them mm. considering trump only won by seventy thousand votes collectively mm-hmm. in the swing states so it's possible i want to check with roseanne with those, about those numbers. <laughs> that's that's true uh, but it was definitely, I could definitely see, you know, the, their feelings towards yeah, hating women and when they, the women sort of invaded and then pushing back even harder. Yeah. But it was interesting to see that turn malevolent because before it's, it's like rebellion that almost, I bet for a lot of them, it sort of got away from them or they don't even really realize the stakes until it's co-opted and now it's truly evil and you're going, wait, what are we doing? There's but school I think shootings a lot of, now? Yeah, but uh, I, I'm not aware. Or, or you change so slowly that, You've just become warped without yeah. even realizing that this is fucked up. Because I think they did a really good job of that, of addressing the whole, it's just a joke, man. Where it's like, oh, black people are fucking stupid and should be slaves. It's a joke. Yeah. Like, that whole mindset of me, conservatives yeah, that yeah. they can get into where... But for, for it to be a joke, there has to be some kind of comedy. Exactly. And there, idea, you know? I, I thought the way they handled we'll that, that and the good faith aspect of that was very interesting. There is no one held accountable, though, for this group of, of no. individuals being shunned, which is kind of covered a little bit in Barbie. Like, in yes. A, in a, but 
I would have liked a little more on that. But other than that, this is the kind of movie where if like aliens were to come to the planet and be like, hey, under, make us understand memes and evil reappropriation of little uh, cute it's characters. It's a very specific request. Or like, help us understand the internet. <laughs> yes. Maybe some of the darker sides sure. of the internet and how a group think really develops. Yeah, what is internet culture? Yeah. You just write into this. Have them watch Feels Good, sure. man. I think it would give them a really good uh, a little thumb sketch. And it also featured one of the most unlikable men I've ever seen on camera. That one guy that I was talking to you about on the phone. That guy. What an but he was barely dick. on there. He's in it more than you yeah. think. I think it just really struck you when he said what he said. Yeah. He's an uh, asset. Real dickhead, but he's in it earlier. What is he? Is he a lawyer? He's some sort of social media guy for like Steve Bannon. Uh, and he's oh. one of those dudes who's like, yeah, we got Trump elected. And you know, Pepe was instrumental mm. and fucking all this stuff. He's like a, he's like a social media like lawyer guy, but on his wall, it's just women in thongs and a 300 poster, but he's wearing a suit. Well, and I think that kind of tells you all you sense. need to know about this guy. And that's his professional office. That's not his home office. Yeah, yeah. I'm a that's little, like his boardroom. That's where he meets clients. Yes. Oh, yeah. And they're probably like, oh, dude, fucking nice ass. You like, know, he's probably got like a Lamborghini framed in there as well. Somewhere. Oh, and, and the maybe Lamborghini Smalls. douche. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that, with the Pepe, uh, uh, the Pepe crypto. Oh, uh, I'm a little, great. little d- disappointed that I that no one, uh, or at least uh, it didn't make the uh, the fan flictions for as far as what you guys have been watching. I thought I, I, I did a good job at and selling that one. it's on Peacock, one, so it's, it's very Peacock, easy it's to access. Easily accessible, a fantastic movie. So yeah, I would, I would highly recommend. But even really? if you have no relation to yeah. it or... If Perhaps you've ever been on the internet. recovery, I'll see it uh, the ensuing week. Oh, you'll feel like you took acid. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably already a fuel that way, yeah. That's true. I want to get a Pepe shirt. I just know that it's going to be d- divisive, and uh, it's going to be hard to explain, but I want to get a peace and love Pepe shirt. I, w- I feel like I want to be part of the cause. I checked their merch, and it didn't seem like they had a ton of wearable stuff. A lot of stickers yeah. and art, but it didn't seem like a lot of official... It's probably a mistake, and I don't know if I, I, I want to start this up, but I, that's where my instincts go. Like, I, want, I want a hippie... Dippy, yeah. peace and love, Pepe, right? But I feel like having the stick. I mean, I already got my cold cockle merch, which is <laughs> problematic enough, which I can't really wear anymore. I feel really bad for everyone who, who wears it and people that got tattoos of it and stuff. I feel feel bad about the cold yeah, cockle. Yeah, if you lump that together with Pepe, it's a little hard to yeah. make the case. Well, I mean, Pepe was 4chan, and, and my shit was uh, Soviet, Soviet Union, Putin, and everything that came before it. So yeah. that's kind of on me, you know? A little bit. It's kind of on, kind of on me. All bit. right, let's get to... Uh, to the big sexy bra bra. I don't know where to start. I mean, I think, I think we gotta stop with start with, with, with Club Ob- Red? Oppie, right? Oh, do you tell me? I think we gotta start with Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is a 2023 film written and directed by Christopher Nolan, starring <laughs> Killian Murphy, Matt, Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh. Josh Hartnett, welcome back, Josh Hartnett. Uh, Casey Affleck, Rami Malek, uh, Jason Clark, Kenneth Brenna, Benny Softy, uh, Tom Conti, David Dasmalchian, Conti. your buddy Dasmalchian, yeah. uh, Dane DeHaan, Alden Ehrenreich, Tony Goldwyn, Matthew Modine, Jack Quaid, Macon Blair, and Gary Oldman. Gary. Gary is so funny in this role because he's unrecognizable, I think, in stills, but there's still something where you're like, there's Gary. Yeah, I can that, tell that's Gary. Him. Yeah. The, da- the Han one really was bugging me through. I was distracted. Dane DeHaan? Yeah. Oh. I'm like, I know him. I, what, oh, right away. He was I was like, so, oh, what, Dane, Dane DeHaan, where you so, been? So different from like yeah. everything we know him from. He's like, not uh, Chronicle Valerian. and uh, Place, Behind the Pi- Place Beyond the Pines. and Valerian. 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 That was the sons. 94% of Rotten Tomatoes last I checked. Uh, fun fact, did you know, Anderson? Six. <laughs> this is crazy. 6% of the viewers who went to see it only saw it because Barbie was sold out. Because what? Barbie was sold out. How do you know that those figures? There, there's a, a tracking, a, a survey tracker. Mm. A Matt Bellany, a friend of mine uh, who does Puck News, uh, he uh, tr- uh, tweeted this. I, I guess Barbie's probably have more screens, right? So it's hard to like tell what's what's doing Can better at the box office. Box office mojo? Do they so say how many screens? Yeah, uh, it should tell you if you look at the uh, uh, like day by day or week by week, whatever it is. I uh, I. I bet they're pretty comparable. Pretty comparable. All right, let's talk about this movie. And uh, Avery, I, you embarrassing, but you saw it, right? I was fucked. I did not because <sighs> what? why are you asking him? The tickets sold out for the seventy millimeter and were only available the following <laughs> weekend. So, <coughs> got away. It was supposed to be the only one sitting at this table that actually saw it on film. <clears throat> I know. Oh, I, see. I said I would go back and see it on film if 
if I felt like I needed to after the original. I saw it on IMAX. However, I don't know if I could need to go back. All right. You know what? Barbie I, is in more theaters. Yeah, uh, 600 more Barbie's theaters. In, actually, a significant number. Really. So, uh, okay. But actually, that's a strike against Oppenheimer because that means Barbie should have less of a chance of selling out right. than 600 more theaters. But Oppenheimer's probably in the bigger theaters with the bigger screens than the IMAX. So there's probably more tickets available ultimately at those theaters that they were both playing at. If that, that makes sense. sense. I just made a bunch of stuff up, and hopefully I have some kind of semblance of... But it felt good to say. <laughs> it did. <laughs> <laughs> True. It sounded convincing. But then I realized that I... Anyways. Um, okay. This movie is probably the best... I, I would say that Christopher Nolan is probably the best guy out there to make a movie about someone such as Oppenheimer. Okay. That said, I don't know if he should have been making this one. Because it's his mank. Ultimately, it's 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 a courtroom drama, like almost yeah, three it's hours. Procedural. The last hour is definitely procedural, and, and there's a whole bunch of lead up that it's just talking heads. Yeah. Did we need the? I feel like we're all kind of duped with the whole. Got to see it on seventy millimeter IMAX. Well, ultimately, there's a aspects, one explosion. There's one explosion right. that looked good, but I mean, we're gearing up. We I've spent the whole weeks as did Brian gearing up for mass destruction. Top five mass destruction scenes. We're in almost movies. like uh, like how Interstellar they're going yet see in the biggest format yeah. possible. Mind so I blowing. Understand uh, practicals love. and the graphics. I think that made more. So you're saying it's there not on par with that in terms of need to see it in a large. It format. might be his least action movie yeah. he's made since Insomnia. I think interesting. There's the like no action sequences. The first act is intriguing or building this world, building the character, all that stuff. Second act is at points kind of white knuckling it. And then third act is like, what am I, what am I watching now? I, yeah, I don't, it's, it's procedural. That's another word I can't see. It, you have to really care about Oppenheimer's ego, which I don't care right. about. And I don't know if I ever will. And I know that he tried to get us to care. But okay. I, I think the, also the real Oppenheimer is probably much more of a piece of shit than, than what was presented to us. Yeah. Let's, can we back up a second? Yeah, Because sure. I actually emailed uh, Gio about this. I thought to myself, if anyone knows the answer to this, it's going to be Giovanni, or at least has the theory. That's right for most questions. That's true. But that's specifically, it'll make sense. I thought, it's been a while. I had to look it up. It's been, it, this is his third film, Christopher Nolan, that he's done now without his brother Jonathan, who he used to write all of his scripts with, mm -hmm. uh, from Memento to the aforementioned Insomnia and Stellar uh, Inception, Interstellar Inception, et cetera, et cetera. And these last three movies, Tenet, Dunkirk, and uh, this one, are just Christopher Nolan's screenplays. And I'm like, do they have a falling out? Did something happen? And Giovanni would theorize, no, seems like it just, uh, you know, uh, Jonathan's working on a TV and seri serialized uh, entertainment and, and has no time to uh, write screenplays for his brother anymore. All three of those movies have a very similar, I don't give a shit about these characters, whereas they're masterful technically, but it's like, I don't even know what I'm watching. Yeah. I don't know why I, I should care. So you think whereas it's a little clinical feeling almost. Yeah, whereas the previous movies had that DNA, like, Interstellar, I was on board. I don't know why, no pun intended. I was on board the whole time. It was hurtling forward, and I cared about the characters. Same with Inception. I didn't know what was going on, but I cared. I wanted them to succeed in the end at whatever yes. they were trying to do. Like there, Even Batman has a little bit of that where it's like, okay, there's a lot of information here, but we are hurtling forward with the screenplay. And these last three movies, including Oppenheimer, don't have that. More sterile is what you're saying. More sterile and... Less, yeah, there's no blood pumping in this thing. I, got, I gotta say, I would disagree with uh, as far as Dunkirk goes. I, I know like people there love Dunkirk, but I some of, some of the stuff that any of those what you're supposed to be pulling on the heartstrings was just cringy, cringe, cringe, cringy. Yeah, Especially I don't think the, the heartstrings kind of was, stuff. was pulling, it was working, but I think in terms of like the heart pounding action no, sure, and the stakes, that's I there. That kind of almost compensated for. The Absolutely. other shortcomings. I hear what you're saying. He's a Brad, master but director. So I don't know. Really if, be so. I don't know if his brother made any a difference one way or the other. And really? I, I think of, if anything, it was trying. And to like Prestige. Prestige was like the total polar opposite. That lot. had some. I yeah, really like the characters. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. I'm just saying the record with and the record without is starting to become kind of clear. My my this old is Belichick and Brady going their several ways. My question is like, did this need? Like, what am I missing? Because for the most part, sure, there's some beautiful like landscapes and whatnot in Al Albuquerque, but do we? Do we need the seven? I saw, oh, this is going to be sacrilege. And I can't believe I'm, I'm saying this, but this is you what watch I watched on your phone. Watching, 
doing the research for the <laughs> top top five most big you know best mass destruction <laughs> scenes in, in, in movies that we did this week. I, I went back to some more of that since I've seen Oppenheimer because I kind of felt like I needed it because yeah, I didn't yeah. get it in Oppenheimer. I need to satiate. And they made a giant deal, and you even sent that that one article about how they didn't fake it. They made a real explosion. Yeah. Hey, there's tons of real explosions uh, going way back to, you know, the early days of cinema yeah, that dude. were maybe as maybe more impressive than what I saw. Yeah. Can we and okay, let's, and let, let's take another step back because and, I think oh, overall the, uh, this is a really good movie. The score too was just overwhelming. It was like constantly telling me how to feel and from the very beginning. I heard from a lot of people because I thought I was the only one. Turns out I tweeted this and everyone had the same experience. The dialogue was once again drowned out. What is he doing then? Like I this, think that the theaters aren't doing no, what he's asking I, them to I, do because I had no problem with my I, theater. I, I, I could I've hear heard everything. I've a lot of people, like dozens, who were like, yeah, dude, this is how he makes movies I, now. No, no, no. That makes no sense. So, hey, let's uh, let's fuck up the mix in this multi-million dollar why, experimental I film. <laughs> I think the theaters aren't probably doing what he's asking them. or maybe yeah. some of the theaters just aren't capable of doing it but that's what I would have to guess and but I can tell you my some theater of that fall onto him at a certain point cuz cuz if no. they're showing it in a less than optimal in his mind setting then everyone else is going to experience they this. might not know how the equipment works i've been to screen like when i was four walling with my little movie i'd go and like sometimes like the projections should he, they would just have the settings wrong and like the the film had like a black frame all the way around it. I'm like, why isn't it taking up the whole screen? As I'd go in for, you know, test screenings and almost like a sound check and they'd be like, oh yeah, I don't know. And I'm like, and I actually had to learn some of the things and show the projectionist right. what oh to do. Look, so who knows? And I wouldn't be surprised if Nolan is like sends over like a little booklet with like how to run his movies and some of them they are. They just don't. They just don't. Wow. But I, did you I, see an IMAX? I, I, I did. Hmm. At Century City over here. Yeah. <sighs> and it just, it did, uh, it did, it, yeah, I, 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 amongst others, many others apparently, experience just a, a really hard to understand dialogue. Well, at that's, times. that's unfortunate. Yeah. I, a real high melodrama, right? All the way through. Sometimes, sometimes it was totally justified. Sometimes, like, I, I remember reading, you know, the fucking PR puts out all these, you know, headlines that don't make sense. And one of them was like, Christopher Nolan says this love story is his best that he's ever written. I'm like, it is? How? For who? You know what it reminds <laughs> me George a little bit? It's George Lucas-esque. Is, uh, uh, First Man, remember that one? Damien yeah. Chazelle with the old yes. uh, Gosling uh, going to playing Armstrong. Like it, it had shades of that at times, especially with the uh, the backstory and the love story and the and the the, the, the wife. And I, I didn't care about Emily Blunt. I didn't care about about Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh. I didn't need to see her laying there naked like that. I oh, love Florence Pugh. That. That I bad. felt like a, that's what the seventy millimeters for. I, yeah, her areolas are around eight feet. In that IMAX. In that format, yeah. I felt like she yeah, was, You can live in them. They dwarf me. Dean, Dean, she's so good. <laughs> she doesn't need to be topless. What are you doing? Speaking of which, the movie didn't need to be R-rated, but the boobs. Like, if they take out the boobs, they got PG-13 movie. I don't understand why. Yeah, he, I think he said fucking once, right? Yeah, I think there was one F word. I like this movie. It didn't need to be three hours long, and it didn't need to be an IMAX. I, I, that's how I feel. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I did not see the need for IMAX on there. And I read the articles, too. And I was pumped. I, I was reading yeah. what the DP was saying and how you... Of course, you got to do practicals because you're going to lose so much. It's, the moment you do any kind of mat or you know VFX, I didn't see it. Now maybe I see this on thirty, like thirty-five, like a smaller screen, not IMAX, and it's even less impactful. I don't mm. know, but ultimately, probably, it's a very I'll dry talk. See it again because I get more out of Nolan's films the more I see them. That said, even though I can acknowledge this is a very well-made movie, how much of this is going to stick with me? Is there any fun at all? Because normally he yeah, has fun to be had in his movies. There's a couple funny lines mm -hmm. about the Nobel Peace Prize and where, how that came yeah, about. A little bit. It's not. It's not. A, it's not. All the scientists all, getting together is kind of. Like they it's have not some, even a downer. It's just kind of what it is. Some of the like twists too. Like I, I could see it coming because they're really driving a point home as far as like how he got the file. It's like okay. Oh. I, I think we all know where we're going. He used black well, and white to separate the two uh, storylines, which was kind of interesting. Robert Downey Jr. will be up for a best uh, supporting actor. He was really good. Killian will probably be up. And it was it was fun watching like the industrialized like movement really happening like right in the forties, where men just like the army, just like what the fuck? We're, we need to do what? Okay, let's just build a town. Mobilize, here. Yeah. yeah, and let's make this happen. Like. You don't see that happening anymore. That was where, the history. Where do you rank this, not in terms of like 1 through 12? Of his, have you seen Following? Yeah, I've seen them all. Uh, I've not seen Following, but I've seen the other 11. He's very ex He's done 12 movies, so it's not that hard. Yeah, I think that and Insomnia are the only ones. Do I need to see Insomnia? No, no, no. It's so that's bad. My, that's my least favorite of his films. But maybe you need to see it some more times. 
<laughs> Every time he gets more out of it. <laughs> Came out right after Memento, so it goes following I, Memento. And I then think insomnia. there's to like, uh, like uh, um, insomnia. insomnia. Because it is atmospheric and it does have a tone that it maintains throughout, but oh boy, this is a hard wash. I'm imagining catching up with his old catalog, you know, like later on, like I'm, you know, like 10 years from now and I'm a young kid, like got to figure out what Nolan's all about. And like, I would like this one, but I think I'd be happy that I was finished with it and didn't mm. have to go back. I'm very curious how I'm going to feel because I, <sighs> I feel like I might like Nolan more than both of you. I really liked, I liked Tenet quite a bit, and I loved Interstellar. I like Tenet. Well, I'm higher uh, like on a lot Interstellar on Tenet. than the market. I, I love Interstellar. That's See, a top-tier movie. Those movie. movies are like experimental films, though, like made on yeah. a mass scale, which makes them really interesting. So I don't like know this what was... Is not. This was experimental in the sense, and the listener nailed it. Like, it did feel like a trailer. It felt like a three-hour trailer. Interesting. <laughs> like, he tried to cut it. It almost... It's cut at a breakneck pace. It's a, it is a breakneck pace, and it almost reminded me a little of like mid '90s Oliver Stone. That's funny you mentioned that because uh, the breakneck pace thing. Because um, I, 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 at a certain point, I was like, "Oof, we've been at this for a while." I looked at my phone, and we're an hour in. Yeah. Like, oh my god, there's still two hours to go. But they're ramping, and he wasn't using that Hans Zimmer like mm. uh, forever escalating. escalating. He didn't use that, but he used a lot of score, which was overwhelming, especially the, for the first hour. And it's almost like they did that on purpose, just so that when they got to the moment, they could do that thing where they drop. Yeah. That's not what she's done a few times yeah. actually, which is really effective. But I saw it coming with this one, and mm. it's like, here we go with a big moment, and there's no music because there's music everywhere else. Yeah. yeah, it's about the music you don't play, it's which is he's playing like very loudly. Addition by subtraction. Yes. But, I mean, he had to add a lot to get yeah. there. But it's a lot of scientists standing around going, look at these papers. Look, at it. this is a possibility. Oh, I don't know. Let's go run the numbers like that. I, but with I, the music. I do love yeah. that <laughs> it's fr- it's This might be my favorite movie I've ever it's seen. It's Very Beautiful Mind. It's got a lot of that going on. This might be my favorite <laughs> It's Frantic 2001. Oh, speaking of 2001, do we just segue? That's so sweet. That was all, honestly awesome. It was all downhill after that. Was that was honestly part. awesome. <laughs> We're talking Barbie now. Should we take a quick break and then? Uh, <coughs> yeah, let's take a quick break. I feel like Transition. I have so much more to say. Opp- Oppenheimer, it's a it's a quality movie. It'll be up for Best Picture. It's just not for me. It's also <laughs> tough because the Nolan he makes us consistently at least good or very good or interesting films. That a movie like this that's pretty good is kind of middle of the pack for him. It's like almost like he's is, like his own Pixar. This is in the yeah, bottom it, half. It is of kind of Nolan similar movies. to Pixar. Yeah. You hold him to such a high standard, but he's he makes these experimental films. It almost feels like he was experimenting with can I make a very very tense talking head a, a dialogue driven story about a man who is not very likable let me ask you this before, before we oh. fade I keep going no go, oh. go. this won't take too much time Oppenheimer or Batman Begins Batman. Batman Begins oh Batman Oppenheimer Begins Oppenheimer or The Dark Knight Rises oh uh, Dark Knight Rises Oppenheimer or The Prestige oh The Prestige see I agree this is like a, a bottom almost a bottom tier Nolan movie it's good but it's like, I can't hold up. He has all the candles in his top tier movies. But the, I guess he's got like jump scares in there. Yeah. <laughs> There's like four or five jump scares. My interest is peaked. <laughs> but they're, they're not earned. Peaked. Avery. It's just like all of a sudden, it's going to be a smash cut to a different thing. I'm peaking. With very loud. <laughs> with a loud, loud sting. sting. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's worse than it's the cat wor- up on the windowsill. It's also really, it's worth seeing. You got to see it. You got to see it. I'm going to get an Alpha Hiver tattoo. I can't wait to love this. I movie. think Barbie might have deserved to be on IMAX more oh, than Oppenheimer. Oh, I'm definitely like getting a Barbie tattoo. I think it might be true, though. All right, we'll save that for next after this. Welcome back. Time to talk some more movies. Vis a vis Barbie. 2023 film. Avery, please. Uh, <coughs> directed by Greta Gerwig. Written by Greta Gerwig and her partner, husband, Noah Baumbach. I can never tell what the relationship is. Her Ken, well done. <laughs> Noah Baumbach, uh, co writer of Barbie, starring Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, America Ferreira, and uh, Ari- Ariana Greenblatt. Issa Rae, Kate McKinnon, Simu Liu, uh, Michael Sarah, Will Ferrell, and Rhea Perlman. 90% of Rotten Tomatoes, last I checked. A uh, huge opening weekend with $155 million, uh, just in the U.S. A new record, Anderson, for a female director. Oh, is it? Yes, it is. What's, what's the record she broke? 
I'd have to look that up. I imagine. Well, what, are, what are we talking about here? A, a, uh, opening weekend for a film directed by a film female director. Oh, I see. Nice. Probably Hunger Games. I'm guessing. Would or be. Wonder Woman. Is that? A f- oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be either one. Zero Dark Thirty. Oh, Zero Dark American Psycho. I doubt those had fast helpful. times. Risk my life. We we can go all day with this. <laughs> Little Man Tate. <laughs> Little Man Tate. <laughs> wow. All right. All right. <laughs> League of their own. <laughs> suburbia. Hey, hey. suburbia, suburbs, <laughs> suburbia. <laughs> this, this 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 bit is just called "We Know Women." Penelope Spheres directed. Penelope, what? Uh, what? Penelope. We'll get to Club Dread in a minute here. Right? What? Um, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> you think Suburbia had a big opening weekend? No, I don't think it did at all. Suburbia. <laughs> You seen Suburbia? No, oh. you're not missing. Oh, no, you're absolutely Other than the clip that uh, was shown at one point. Yeah, was it the offensive clip? I think it was wh- whichever one you showed. They're in a, they're driving around in that car. And yeah, something, and he's like, yeah, my stuff. stepdad's a cop. That's not even the worst part. He's black. It's like what in the? And you're the <laughs> you're the protagonist. At one point, the, this is the one with Flea, right? Yeah. This is the the, the production so fast and loose. We're and talking about Suburbia point, now. At guys. one point, we'll uh, the character goes. <laughs> the character says on camera, he says, "All right, get in the car, Flea." And he's like, Dude, my name's David, like a character name, yeah. and, they, and they drive off. And they drive off. Made the final cut. That's great. <laughs> Good stuff. Where he got his name. Fast and loose. Yeah. Effortful. Okay. Uh, Barbie. Barbs. Barbara. Barbs. I enjoyed this movie. Yeah, I it can see that. Really high on the fun scale. Is it? I don't off, know if it could be more fun. Off the, really? On the fun scale. Are you guys off the, serious? Off the goddamn charts. No, 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 guys. Guys, you guys are both wrong. A lot of fun to be had here, but they went away from fun every chance they got. Right? Yeah, they, they, they uh, tried. To, well, I mean, they always brought it back to fun. I agree. They they went outside the uh, the fun zone and uh, tried to uh, make some you know social statements or, or some points, but they always brought it back to fun. When this movie was on and popping for me, it felt like a little bit like Idiocracy, mm. right? Uh, it, the colors were great. The songs yes. are probably going to be better on the second viewing, which I will uh, I've probably heard the songs see a lot because Christy loves the soundtrack. Oh, yeah, she listened to it a lot? Oh, my God. I it's like pink, pink. I like so much of this movie, but ultimately, I think it, I was kind of annoyed by the end because it asked so much of me. The the message about uh, yes. the very very end, yeah. women's roles, in and society. it was going on and on, and it was. So maybe I'm picking on it. Maybe I'm just Wait, not being nice. The end kept going on and on. Yeah, uh, the, the splash, the, end. S- the scene. Yeah, yeah. And it, I, I think that they... It, they it almost ex- reiterated what they already said. Already had said, yeah. There was a lot of that going back to the well. And mm. I was also feeling bad for the little girls that were in the audience who were just not picking up on any of this. There was a yeah, bunch of like seven-year-old little for girls. Adults. It's, it's, people have been asking us, like, can I take my kid to see it? It's not inappropriate in any way. It's just a lot of... If I'm nitpicking over. again, though, like it could have been made a little bit more fun, like Pixar movies sure. do, where they could have had you know, a, sta- you know, a, a give and take. Yeah, there's a lot it of it over their heads. I don't think it was even yeah designed for that. It could have been summer movie. The kids are out of school. Be? Barbie. I mean, the colors. They, they were definitely marketing. They, they want moms to bring their. I don't. I think they want women ages eighteen to forty-five to see this with their kids. No, no. just them. I, I think this and is uh, a, with other yeah. hordes of women. Well, maybe they'll get there. But I think this opening weekend, there's a lot of kids, at least in my theater, and there were uh, a handful was, of kids. There was a bunch of kids dressed up like Barbie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's going to be a lot of moms dragging their children. Pe- tons to of people dressed in pink. In my theater, I was right. so, That's right, sold out theater. So the sto- this, you know what this is? Also, it's like Lego movie for girls. Yeah, it, oh, yeah, I actually, yeah, right down down it. adult girls. It just yes, <laughs> it, 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 millennial it, women. A, yeah, I think it's a very good movie. For me, it just falls just short of that sort of special whatever it is that pushed like a movie over yeah. the top. This is it's not that, but I still think it's very good. It is. It's very good for a Barbie movie. Mm-hmm. Greta Gerwig. Is, it, it, I, I was curious and and uh, I was not let down. I, I feel like I'm nitpicking right off the bat because both you guys are coming at me talking about how fun it is. When I think there was more oh, fun. I, to I haven't had. even started. They left some fun on the table. I Avery. haven't even started. All right, so let's uh, let's get up with the premise. And for those of you, it's who fun. Might- I almost feel like the less you know, because they don't really tell you much with the trailers. They don't really give anything away as to where this goes. I think all they did for the trailer was they showed the 2001 homage right at the top. I never, I never, that was new to me. I I, I I hadn't seen that at all. I knew nothing. And someone else had seen it. There must have been a trailer for the And they showed the musical number. So a lot of people went into this thinking this was a musical. The the Ken thing. At some point, Anderson, they released a trailer that was almost start to finish. Just the can dance. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I saw that. I like when they do that. So people were, a lot of people were thinking this was going to be a musical, the Mm. entire thing. 
Hmm. And it is not. So you're also marketing to kids. No, that said, the, uh, the the opening, the literally the cold open is a homage to 2001. Kubrick is everywhere. It is fantastic. Wait, that was 2001? Uh, I thought it was. I thought it was Barry Every, Lyndon. Never looked it up. Yeah, I thought it was Barry Lyndon, too. Okay, well, you know, I could be wrong. <laughs> Either way, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I thought it was Fly Me to the Moon. <laughs> I thought it was... A <laughs> I thought it was Napoleon, Kubrick's next project. Uh, so we can't could talk it, about this movie? Could have been Lolita. <laughs> We can't, AI. We, we can't talk about this movie? No, I of think you can. can. How do we talk about it? I, I just heard, like, no, we can't talk about it because they don't give anything away in the trailer. Oh, no. I didn't, no, no, I, I don't think it diminishes. Don't listen to Avery. <laughs> I don't think it diminishes anything. But I, 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 that I do like, though, is how they really didn't let you know what was going to happen mm-hmm. with the trailers. Normally, they just give fucking everything away. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice, that was a nice treat. And I feel like more people got to experience it almost just with fresh eyes and right. just have no preconceived notions, just it's Barbie. Okay, hot take number one. Uh, this movie has a really... Does a really good job of maintaining a specific tone. Yes, I was to, amazed which by is that. Which is hard to do because this could be very silly, right. or it could be very cynical. You know what I mean? This could be like taking shots at Bart, and it's a little bit of both. But it, it also it has a lane in the middle that it knows what it is, and it's it's right there. I agree with you until it it thought it was a little bit more important. But there's only like two did. scenes like that where I would agree, but outside of those two scenes, we're almost that's the climax like, though. So that's where no, I want to. Anderson, I think it had built up enough. Whatever, cachet, goodwill. goodwill with the audience, and it could go, it could swing for the fences on that. Okay. And whether or not it landed, that's up to you, but I think it, it, it earned it. I was willing to fully forgive it after that. I was watching it, almost giving myself douche chills for part of it, because part of my brain was so like, much. I want to love this too. And I was like, ah, I don't know if they earned this. But it had built up so much goodwill with me that I, I didn't care. Yeah. I, di- I didn't care. I w- I also had to pee really bad at this point. I well, was like, all right, guys, get through it. I, we all know where you're going, and you're really dragging this out. And it almost felt like it was like, can't believe I'm actually working with Rita Perlman, and she's here, and let's give her, you know, let her chew the scenery. Yeah, it almost felt like she was concerned she didn't do enough to address yeah. her specifically. It did feel like... Because it seemed like, like everything else is wrapped up very, very neatly yeah. and nicely, and then she almost went, did I not drive the point? Yeah, oh. it just felt, felt like it was it was, it it was a letdown at the end. It almost felt like she was asking, "Am I letting women down with this ending? Without having this ending in, do I need to really make my point explicit?" For and as far time? as the whole message, I, I you know, I don't want to sound like the uh, like what my wife calls me out of touch, dumb white guy, uh, but I just I don't know what the uh, maybe we should do like a spoiler because I what do you want to say? <clears throat> What the overall? You can talk about the overall message. It's not a spoiler. I mean, the overall message, from what I understand, is like the first thing with with Barbie, right? And forgive me because I'm not a big Barbie, uh, you know, fanatic. And I think that there's a lot there for people who like really know Barbie stuff. I think that there's oh, a, the geos the love of letter. Barbie world. Are yeah, gonna, they're gonna their love minds this. Yeah, this is like their Spider Verse. I saw this with my sister too, and she uh, she, she remembers some of the Barbies uh, yeah, yeah. earlier on. I was talking to Gina Grad earlier today, and she's like, I collected all the Barbies. I'm like, well, you're in for a treat because they all make an appearance. Apparently, the the pregnant Barbie, the reason why they discontinued that was because she went back to normal too fast, and that was not fair for the women, right? <laughs> she lost the weight. Right. So what I understood is like Barbie comes out, and there's this ob- you know objectifying women, and it's, she's too perfect and whatnot. So they started making all these other Barbies that are not like you know just the the specimen, but uh, they're also like career women, and they're capable of doing this and being president. And, but then by the time the movie's over, it's like, stop putting that pressure on us. We don't want the pressure. So, like, what is... Yeah. It was like... But they, I think the message is like, let us be president, but with no pressure, please. Is but, that the message? But I, th- I think the movie actually kind of acknowledged that, which is Barbie is everything to some girls and nothing to some girls, right? Like, like you said, you can't have both ways. Like, are we expected to do all this stuff or are we expected to never do all this stuff? I don't know. That's the message I came away with. I don't, I don't have a lot of thoughts on Barbie going into this. Mm. Sorry. No, I don't. I'm, I'm just trying I'm to understand. I'm apologizing like, to what, what? I don't know. I was really taken by uh, the commentary on masculinity. I yeah. think that was the part I enjoyed the most. That was uh, that was a good time, for sure. Ken goes the real world, and he, he is in love. Ken, he loves it. Ken, every, every single second Ryan Gosling was on screen. I, it's the best. I it's know. It's than Pete Gosling. I feel like this movie should have been called Ken. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there should be a sequel called Ken, and uh, we need more Ken. I want a sequel called Alan. Oh, Alan, was, be Alan was great. I need, I need more Alan in my life. I was blown away by this movie. I yeah. did not expect to like it as much. Really, this is one of the funniest movies I've seen in like five years. Did you see her? Like, did you see Lady Bird? No. Okay, so I mean, she's a she's a talent, and I knew that there was going to be something really, really great here. And I think maybe I was expecting even a little bit more. Maybe I don't know. I thought it was brilliant because normally when they do the sort of send up of guys and male culture. 
It's either very heavy handed where it's just men are rapist criminals yeah. and fuck men. Or it's just very that not that insightful. And the way this was done was so on the nose without uh, was, stereotyping men. Like it was innocently on the like nose. Just the polls they would do were like when they were illustrating men mansplaining. The stuff they chose and the specific examples were so funny and cherry-picked. Like the stuff about the Godfather or whatever it was. That was great. It was yeah, so yeah. specific and funny. I think and most of us have been guilty uh, over yeah, at some point I or another with uh, <laughs> with relationships. And yeah. it was so nuanced. Where everything How about I just tell you, you talk the whole movie? Yeah, can you start it from the beginning to talk through it? <laughs> the entire it was, Wait, you've never seen the Godfather? It was, it was great. I yeah. felt like every single thing they had mentioned, I was guilty of at some point but didn't feel guilty for having done that it was yeah. more like hey men do this and you know for better for worse you know this is what we deal with and right wh wh what are you gonna do yeah this is how men are i was also pissed and i see we kind of gotta do the spoiler because like I, I was ready to be very upset where that thing that, that happens and we see it happen in, in culture <laughs> in Hollywood all the time where <laughs> it's like something awful is happening and then it's like oh we'll fix this by just flipping it and having it the inverse, which is also bad, right? Okay. They were going down that road, but they didn't end up there. And I was I was afraid that I was I was ready to be really like annoyed. Like really that's the answer is to just flip it. You know what I mean? I, I like to hear your example. I don't know if that it warrants an entire spoiler. But I know, because I know I don't want to. It's a brand new movie, and I don't want to like talk about the overall. You know, it, it, it's an arc that happens in the beginning, first act, and then gets wrapped up in the third act. And Understood. delighted by the horses through line. The horses were pretty good. I, I, just a few times, I leaned over my sister, like, look at the horse in the background, like on the screens with all the. There's a the set design uh, rivals uh, the set design in White Noise in oh, the supermarket, right? The, I've never seen a mortal lock more mortal locky for best production design for an Oscar nomination. I wonder how much she was part of the White Noise because I mean they work as a team, the Noah Baumbach and, and and vice versa, right? It, a lot of similarities there. It's almost like White Wait, Noise was, was a bit. White Noise, remind me. The, super, the 80s supermarket. With Adam Driver, yes, not yes, a good yes. movie, but all the stuff in the supermarket. Yep, and yep, the musical yep. number in the supermarket. There's a lot of crossover there. You can see that they, uh, you know, yeah. have pillow talk. Apparently they made everything at 23% smaller. So that it could be his Barbie's a little bigger than yeah, like the, the stuff car. around her, the car and all that. So that's what kind of amplified that Barbie effect. It, very good. I, I don't want to uh, continue to nitpick this movie. Uh, but I, I guess I, I want to. I think this is four and a half stars for me. Four and a half. Four and a half. I'd say it's. I don't, I don't if they know. stick the landing, this is a five star movie for me, and I would I would watch this w whenever it was on. Really, I was blown away by this. Blown that away. Was fucking hilarious. Avery's taste is all over yeah. the map. I, I'm not quite to Avery's level, but I thought it was very good. I smiled throughout. I enjoyed it. I'll probably see it again. Christy's going to drag me and Tessa. So um, really, oh, you think always, Tessa should be watching this? Christy, Christy's on Avery's level. She mm. th this is the, this is one of her favorite movies of all time. Mm. I, I it. liked it a lot. Is that why she's wearing hot pink right now? Smart woman. Smart yeah, woman. That's probably why. Is it? All right. Yeah. Everyone needs to relax. All right, let's... Uh, it's a cultural moment. How did you see her? It's a cultural moment, window. Anderson. She's what wearing hot chances? pink. I know. What are the chances? We're talking about her, and there she is. Yeah, well... She heard pretty good. We're, talking about we're, we're doing it from your house. She could point. show up at that's any moment. <laughs> she wasn't here until now, is my point. I like this movie quite a bit. Uh... You could have fooled me. I don't want to do star ratings anymore. It just seems so rude. You know, it's, it's a four like, star movie for me. It's like giving a star rating to a relationship. You know what I mean? Like the amount of work and energy that goes into these things. You're a three star friend. <laughs> like above average for sure. No doubt. No, undoubtedly. I'm average friend. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's do Club Dread. Uh, friends. Could not be higher on the Brian Fun scale. I really enjoyed it. It was a, it was a lot of fun. I don't know. There's a movie called Club Dread. <laughs> Is it possible to not like this movie? Genuinely, uh, Ben, a guy that got with ben the Shapiro, show, but to not like it. I, I, I wrote that down in my notes. Like, who in their honest right mind gives this a negative review? And I realized there are people who have a certain world of view that they're attached to. They're dogmatically sort yeah. of responsible for, and it's like, all right, I guess if you must, if you must hate things like this, then I understand. I couldn't hang with someone who hates this movie. Yeah, I. I <sighs> I was very annoyed. I had some friends not see this because they're like, it's a fucking Barbie movie. They're like yeah. East Coast. They're like East Coast 38, Arrested 40. In their teenage years. Kind like, of I'm a man. Moves. Yeah, and it was just, I, I hate the situation. That. If you're concerned about that, please see this movie. It's not what you think. It's not this. Uh, I, I, I thought that was implied, though, because it's a Greta Gerwig movie. Which I don't think so. Make... I think a lot of dudes who would really enjoy this. Yeah are going to not because they think, oh, it's a movie my girlfriend really wants to see and it's about fucking Barbie and I'm not going to see that because it's about 
like a fucking yeah, guys, loser. Take, take the chance. And it's so... Uh, can you know be the, better than that. We maybe a, the most... We got a lot of guys like that listening to the show, so let me just talk right to you. About alpha males? See this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Juice head alpha males. <laughs> One of the most impressive things with the movie, honestly, is Mattel. Allowing their... Because yeah. you know when you see, like, you'll see, like, Neil Patrick Harris play a version of, like, a coked out version of himself? Yeah. Like in uh, Harold and Kumar. Kumar yeah. Like Mattel's doing that in this yeah. movie. It's <laughs> unbelievable. They're being they dragged through happen. the mud and they're cool with it. Yeah. And, I, it's all in good fun and with the overall messaging. I feel and like they just kind of give them carte blanche because what, what what else could they have pulled? They must have gone, what do we have to lose? And I yeah. would imagine Barbie is becoming increasingly less relevant. So they probably Someone, went, fuck yeah. it. Then just Hail Mary. See what like, she can do. Who's into Barbies these days? The one spot where... Like, like just test it. Does she care no, about Barbie? She, in fact, she kind of hates the idea. She's like, ugh, Barbie. I'm like, okay, that's very evolved, but I don't know why I wonder if this puts her back on the map. I don't know why that's important to you. I could see see this putting her back on the I, uh, I almost bought a hoodie today. Really? Yeah. Can, can, My, they, yeah oh, yeah. yeah. Can off? <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. I envisioned myself wearing that. I'm like, am I trying to say too much if I'm wearing that? I think I am. I'll take a know. Pepe shirt, but not a Kanoff shirt. I'll, t- I'll take a Kanoff shirt. You're going to Kanoff it? You're going to come in here all like uh, tight end? I think this week? is the men's movement we need is yeah. I am Kanoff. <laughs> wow. I am Kanoff. Finally, us men can rally around something for us. Ken. That was, that was the real thing. More men should have been playing with Ken. That's, <laughs> that's what I learned. I always remember Ken being a brunette. Yeah, I thought he was too. Yeah. I guess beach Ken maybe is not. The beach thing also hilarious. You got to beach off. Right. Uh, I'll beat you off. Uh, let's. What do you there, do? I beach. There might be a beach there. Let's let's move on to uh, Club Dread here. <laughs> Broken Lizards Club Dread was assigned to us by Rex, Rex Fisher. Fisher. I yeah. did not get a chance to talk to uh, Rex. No. I think my heaven is this and Blackberry just playing back to back on a loop. You got to go back and see Lady Bird. You, you, you would just, like Lady Bird quite a bit as well. It's on the list. It's I'm a much different tomorrow. movie, but. Uh, I'm putting it on the He's list. He's got to see Barbie through more time. <laughs> That's true. Go ahead, Barbara. Directed by Jay Chandrasekhar, direct, uh, starring Brittany Daniel, Kevin Hefferman, Hefferman, yeah, uh, Eric uh, Stolhansky, Steve Lemmy, Jay Chandrasekhar, Paul Soder, Soder, excuse me, Soder, uh, Jordan Ladd, Michael Weaver, Nat Faxon, Sam Levine, and uh, Bill Paxton. Yes. Paxton, just 29% of Rotten Tomatoes. You can rent this if you're so inclined. Uh, Anderson, this will be an interesting bellwether for you because... If I had assigned you this movie, mm-hmm. you'd be fucking furious. Mm-hmm. But a listener assigned it, so I'm, I'm prepared for it. Not anything. just any listener, right? Rex Fisher. Yeah, we right. go way back with Rex Fisher. Uh, here's what Rex has to say about, uh, about Club Dread. Most Broken Lizard fans rate this one behind Super Troopers and Beer Fest. Logan loved both those movies, and sure. he would always suggest that we, or I Give not the watch them because he knew oh. my taste in mil- movies. Both are good. Both uh, are good. Rex goes on to say, I disagree uh, with that sentiment that uh, this one's behind those. He says, uh, I think this is their best movie, mostly due to Bill Paxton's hilarious performance. This is after he had already found stardom with Apollo 13, Twister, A Simple Plan, and his directorial effort with Frailty. I Effort? It was fucking home run there, Rex. Come on now. Uh, I don't understand why he did this movie, but I am so glad that he did. Just an angry Jimmy Buffett. I think the songs are great. Pina Colada Berg, written three and a half years before Margaritaville was on the map. That's a quote from the movie. My friends and I quote this movie all the time. She didn't die from a fat ass, I can tell you that much. And then uh, Machete Phil, as well as, is is it a strange sucking sound? And then uh, he can't hear the name Penelope anymore without pronouncing it Penelope. Penelope. Lastly, I simply assigned this because my previous picks were political and heavier subject matter, so I wanted some candy as my final pick. Do we know what Rex has assigned us? Oh, yeah, yeah. He did uh, Unplanned as well as oh, What is a yes. Woman. So here All we are right. with Club Dread. Uh, He's a man of many signs. The trifecta, yes. Rex, I don't know what to think now. A man for all seasons. This, so, was, this was a very dumb comedy. I mean, I mean, in the nicest way. Like, this is like a, a, a dumb comedy. So if you're like me and you're so out of the loop as far as Broken Lizards Club, like, who is this? Like, it says in the opening, like, starring Broken Lizard. Mm-hmm. It's like, what, what, it's, a, it's a comedy troupe, which yes. I am not familiar with oh, really? at all, other than their titles of their movies, sure. which I have not seen. Uh, so that, that's asking a lot to, you know, laugh at a really, really over-the-top dumb comedy like this when you not you don't recognize any of the, of the comedians, right? Because they're all new to To varying me. degrees. I know a few of these guys, but yes. And you got to, like, trust your your sense of humor and the people that are dispensing it, I think. I think that goes... And I've said it before, like, a lot of time with the sitcoms. Like, you don't like sitcoms. People don't like sitcoms the first season because sure. they don't know who they these people are. And then once you know them and trust them and you want to laugh with them, you do. So 
that said, this one was hard to get into. However, I was less than I was at the two minute and twenty two second mark when I wrote down in my notes, uh, Brian humor. There's a lot of Brian humor. A lot of Brian humor in this movie. So, uh, why don't you take it from there? How is Jamie Kennedy not like uh, in this movie at some point or another? This is Jamie his, Kennedy. His soul is in the movie. His soul is his absolutely in the movie. spirit is hanging around. Yes. I will agree with uh, with Rex. Uh, number one, um, Paxton is by far the best part of the movie. Yes. I enjoyed Paxton a lot. See, because uh, we're, we're familiar with him as well. Coconut. Well, you know, he also, he's the only real movie star, if that makes sense. Like, he, he, he rose above and... Uh, Killed it. He plays a very ornery coconut Pete. Drunken. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a he's an angry, bitter, um, not quite as successful Jimmy Buffett. You know what I mean? Like his career, had it gone better, would have been Jimmy Buffett. But Jimmy Buffett came around with Jimmy Buffett. So we have coconut Pete, yeah. who is a failed uh, 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 imitator, effectively. Uh, and and he, at one point he yells out, "You think any money has to put up with this shit?" Yeah, he's entitled. And then he, he hurls a coconut at the wall. Yeah, he I, was I great. Laughed. I, I must admit, I laughed out loud a number of times. I laughed out loud a, a, a few times as well. Uh, the penelope, uh, Rex is absolutely right. That was great. There's a, a, a Spanish fella who fell in, uh, in love with uh, a woman named Penelope, and he, he pronounces her name Penelope. That's right. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's, a, it's a murder mystery, a uh, slasher film, ultimately. Yeah. The plot is not here or there. Uh, at one point, Sam Levine plays a... Uh, Plays a, a kind of a jerk uh, guest of the resort. It's plays a so island resort. They can't get off the island, etc. Hedonistic et island resort. At one point, he's like, "Cause the bar, the like, Drambuie, neat." <laughs> what, what is the fucking damn Drambuie? Huh. Yeah, but a neat, of course, is the only way. Brian Jeff. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't, I didn't quite, I didn't quite get that 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 part of the Drambuie, comedy. neat. Uh, the British dread, dreaded dude, like he took a lot of adjusting, but by the end of the movie, oh, no. I kind of thought he okay. was okay. I'm glad. And I really so liked that... his off screen stuff where like he is being, you know, mutilated at one point and you can just hear him saying, oh, I should have known it was you. <laughs> like that kind of thing. I, this is the kind of movie where if you watch it at a certain age and you like yeah, that troupe yeah. and you're watching with friends, it, it, it's like Billy Madison uh, for I guess, a smaller select group of yeah, people. Yeah, I can I, see that. Now you like this. Well, so I, I haven't seen this one, but I do like Super Troopers and Beer Fest quite a bit. Oh, you should watch this one. Then. Really enjoy it. You? I don't know. I it hadn't come across my plate. The the other two were very big amongst my friend group, but that's when you're you know a little shithead kid and yeah. you don't have the full breadth of scope. Know what's out there and all that. So yeah, it just totally slipped under the radar. When did this come out? Is this more recent? Oh four. Oh yeah, four. So yeah, it was right around that time then. Um, I I didn't know. Bill Paxton had this. I, you know, I haven't seen him being this silly since Chet. Yeah, I, since yeah. Weird Science. Yeah, that's right. I mean, even in like Aliens. Yeah, you know, game over, man. Game over, man. But yeah, this was. He's just. You know, he's he, he was, was given license. Scenery. He was yeah. given license to do what he wanted with this character, and you can tell he had a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, Brian, if you assign this to me, I would know what your intention would w- would be, which is to to upset me and torture me because this is Brian comedy, right? He assigned it to you and I, not right. just me, right? It's, it's, it's a big difference there. I, I agree. And you mentioned so, so you realize the British guy with the dreadlocks—that's the director, right? That's Jay Chandrasekhar. Mm-hmm. He's part of the troupe. Right. He's been on the Coral Show many times. Oh, I didn't know that. He's a funny guy. He's a nice guy. I like Jay a lot. The problem. The problem. You could tell they had a great time making this movie. Yeah, you get that. It's one of those movies where like these guys had so much fun making yeah. this. Am I having fun watching it? It's one of those. Did it bleed through in any way though? Because sometimes you get that, but sometimes it could be annoying. Where it feels more inside joke than actual joke. It's it's borderline. Yeah, it's okay. getting there. I know so, exactly what you're saying. So I know the accent was intentionally bad. He has like a ridiculous British accent, but it's very bad, and you can tell that's that's the joke. But the problem is. That's the joke. The joke is that he talks funny the end. There's nothing else funny about his character. He looks funny. He has oh. the dreadlocks. but He's got the tennis thing going on. He's like heartbroken by the girl and constantly jealous of her. There's some. There's the off-screen murder uh, diatribe that he's... It's indicative of the overall problem with the movie. For me, the movie is the joke. The movie is, this is exactly what would happen in a real movie. They're, they're lampooning. But it happens in this movie. Like, there's no, it's like, it's a one-to-one. It's like, the character who would do that in the real movie is this character, and he does exactly that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's no twist on the joke. It's just, wouldn't it be funny if, yeah, let's just do that. It's like, there's nothing, there's, we're drilling down one layer uh, into the joke. Where they just do well, I mean, layers. instead of defending So him it's s- tongue-in-cheek, but they just do it anyway. There's no, like, wink to it. They just end up doing it, even though they're aware what? of it, though. 
the th- whatever the thing is, people are getting murdered or yeah. But he's like defending himself by uh, by trying to hit him with tennis balls because he's a gr- supposed to be a great tennis player. So not they're not that you wouldn't see that in a regular horror movie. No, like that's the joke. But I'm saying this character with the funny voice and the funny accent. It's like that's where it ends. He was a bit, a bit like he was so silly. Like he didn't even belong in this super silly movie. Like right. his character was like a, a whole other level. Like this movie's really hard to uh, to to review because it's like if you love this type of movie, yeah, this is yeah, a movie exactly. for you. If you don't like this type of movie, you're, you're not, not going to like it. Yeah. yeah. And there are a lot of fun touches. Like I, I enjoyed the uh, the head on the record player that was spinning around. That was like there's silliness that it works, but then there's a lot that I don't know, kind of falls flat. I don't know. I, I found uh, problematic. So it's like including tropes, but then not playing with the tropes. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like the, the, it's there. And there's just nothing. And they think having the trope is joke enough. No, because it's they, like making a salad, not adding any dressing and mixing it. It's well, like so the there's head, a pile of vegetables. You think the head on the uh, record player would be there? No, that I'm saying there's fun touches. Yeah, like you know what I mean. That's just a fun moment that I laughed at. I'm not, I'm not trying to say this movie is worthless. I'm just saying, <laughs> not, but I, lest I come off that way, I'm trying to say it's just, it didn't add up. It didn't For a guy who up. loves brain candy, you know, this seems that's like it's down, that's a fucking movie. down your leg. That's a watch along. Same, no, it's not. Oh. No, it's not, Brian. That's not a watch along. Fucking brain candy. <laughs> Kids in the Hall, you a fan of that there, Avery? Is there brain candy on him right now? I mean, it's in the same lane. The, these, these I've movies. never oh. seen comedy Kids trips. in the Hall brain you? candy. Yeah. Nothing I've heard on the show has made it sound appealing. <laughs> Brian's constantly <laughs> selling it, though. Nothing I've heard on the show has made it's it sound appealing. It's my DVD. I'm <laughs> glad that I have, and I, I know what Broken Lizards Club is now. I mean, Broken Lizards is. <laughs> broken Lizards. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I guess I know. I know what the Broken Lizards is. is. And I, you know, I'm not clam- I, I, clamoring to see Beer Fest or uh, Super Troopers, but you know, who knows? Maybe one day uh, we'll, we'll have to watch those as well. money over this shit. Hurls a coconut. I enjoy that. Yeah, see, this is the kind of movie, like, if you watch it, like, when you're in college or something with a group of friends, and, like, it just becomes... Yeah. Yeah. And touch, I didn't a see touch, it A then. common touchdown. Yeah, exactly. And there's enough there, especially if you're, like, you know, drink, having a few drinks, and you just have it on, like, you know, at the frat house that you live at or whatever. You should have had a few drinks. I don't drink and watch movies for the first time. I, I try know, not to do that. This feels like the kind of movie that I'm going to go back and watch it tonight with a six pack. I'll get back to you. I'll let you know how I think you got to watch Barbie with some drinks. Yeah? Oh, they got to watch Spear Fest. Andy gets loose with Barbie. I, I, I enjoy Barbie. some champagne there's, and there's something else. Obviously, Andy doesn't like Barbie for some reason. I like the Barbie, all right? He doesn't Bar- feel like enough. fine. It's just, uh, <laughs> I could have used more Alan, though. Alan was Alan pretty was good. Sweet. When the best part of the movie was oh, with, with Barbie over there is uh, when when Goss, when Ken was crushing it, Ken was crushing. It. I almost feel like Ken was held back a little bit at times. Like, yeah, but that's that's Ken. He feels repressed. No, I'm I talking bet about they with, had to cut some of it out yeah. because it was too. Holy shit! This is all about Gosling. Yeah, or it could easily have been. He felt almost, which sounds crazy to anyone seeing this movie, but it felt like he was a little bit bridled, even though he was doing. Insane work. I like wanted really to live work. with Ken. I want to just be in that world. and like kind of teach him like you're you're in the right direction, but you're yeah. going a little too far. Ken. I'm not joking when I say it's like Pete Gosling. Like what? what yeah. What? What is a better there's performance? Not. This is like fun La La Land. Yeah. So there was t- there's t- La 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 Land. There's like talks of him being nominated. Do you think that's insane? No, I think it's. I think the Golden Globes would nominate him. You know what I mean? But oh yeah, a comedy. Not. I, I don't think there's a place. In the Oscars, I, I I do think what oh, he's doing. Can you is, imagine is the brilliant. backlash? They nominate him in the movie gets no other nominations. <laughs> Just the Ken part gets nominated. <laughs> the ultimate irony. The patriarchy. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> we just do it better. Just do it better. We just do it. We're <laughs> quiet about it now. <laughs> what? Would we, he, yeah, he brings up spending the night. What would we even do? I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> <let's> do <laughs> Honey, every night is girls' night. <laughs> It's good. It's good. Oh, fun. Club Dread better. Fun movie. Fuck. What? <laughs> Get out of my kitchen. What do you like more? What do you? What, what? I want to see Ken and Ball Silly hang out. You know I want Ken to meet Ball Silly. <laughs> he would love. They're him. very different movies, but yeah, he would like yeah. just just a shot of him just watching. Yeah. Blue, uh, why are there so many flies in your kitchen? Why are there so many flies in my kitchen? <laughs> it's making me uncomfortable with your procedure happening tomorrow. I, I, I they're like mini buzzards. That's right. They're, they're, they they detect uh, a corpse. They can. Uh, I can just land on you. Anytime right. there's death off screen, like in a new scene in a movie, you can tell because you hear flies. the flies. You mm-hmm. can always hear the flies. These flies in your in your kitchen, silent, silent flies. Silent, Isn't that silent, weird? Some flies super killers. loud. Some flies super loud. Four, there's weird. four fucking flies in your kitchen right now. Well, do something about it. There was one when I walked in. What hey, are they doing? Do a fly swatter. You pour some water on them? 
There's one on my hat right now. <laughs> nope, flying under it. Oh my god, Brian, what's okay? Uh, what are we doing? Well, you're asking me. You're gonna ask me, uh, Cloud Red or no? Okay, Th- the three last, the last three big movies we saw: Club Red, Barbie, okay. uh, 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 Oppenheimer, oh. Mission Impossible. Don't forget Indiana Jones. I, I will not. I, I did forget that, and I will continue to forget it because the old man was rooting out gold in the jungle that did not make my cut. All right, those are the three. Like, if you, if you, I think I. Oh fuck. I got I every this hurts my balls, but I gotta I, I gotta put Mission Impossible above Bob Bob Hoppy. I hate it. I hate I hate it. You, you, put, may, you, you may have to agree. Did you I put do. Barbie above Bob? I w- would you really? <laughs> I really I'm would. putting Mission Impossible top. Really? I can't fucking believe it. No. Wow. But I feel like of of the movies that know what they are and do it the best, I think that Mission Impossible really wow. I see I And I gave Barbie. it a, a middling really and I love Mission Impossible. Oh, you know, I think there's a lock that Oppenheimer is up for Best Picture. Yeah, yeah, it'll be up for Best yeah. Picture, for sure. I think Mission Impossible is four and Barbie's four and a half for me. I think Mission Impossible is just more impressive than the other two. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm seeing him again. Top five uh, Tom Cruise running scenes, as well as stats yes. and whatnot about his movies oh, really? and how much he, re- he runs in them. And They uh, released a seven-minute video. Of the I think, was it Paramount that made... Uh, it was Warner Brothers. Brothers Warner made, Brothers. No, Warner Brothers made uh, Barbie. I know that much. But so whoever d- releases the studio for Mission Impossible, they made an official video of seven minutes of Tom Cruise running in all the Mission Impossible. Oh, just it's the like Mission a seven Impossible. minute nice. cut of every single well, I time. I think like in one of them he runs. I think in one of them he runs like seven minutes in one movie though. Yeah, it's a long. I think that's. I think the Mission one in Impossible Dubai. three where he he runs no Shanghai. He just he's running. Oh, that one too. But in Dubai he runs. He outruns. <laughs> we'll be talking about a lot storm. of uh, Tom Cruise running. It's a, it's amazing how many movies he's running. And I didn't even know. I just noticed. I'm like, you know what? He runs in every goddamn movie. And then it's like a cultural thing. Like people talk about oh, it all the want. time. And like he's been talking about it. I guess it's a known thing. No one. I'm sure no. running coaches have to coach people out of running like him. I'm no. sure this. I, I found, a, I found right a guy away. who like runs like different actors. Yeah. Did you come across the uh, fact that Tom Cruise, uh, halfway through his career, hired a running coach? No. And was running improved. I didn't see yeah, that. We're, Interesting. We're going to talk about that. I found a guy who like oh. imitates different runners. Like he was running like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. And then he was running like Jack, Jack Sparrow does. It was very effective too. Like you could tell. You're like I know who that runner is. The <laughs> art of running. Because if running like Tom Cruise is the right way to go, I'm just going to start doing that. You got to do the it. hands like it's cutting through, right? Oh, Aerodynamic. Yeah. You can't run with your fists like that. Right? Was the first one uh, though? Uh, T two. I feel like it was the T one thousand that was running like that. As I'm, isn't that what he's doing? When I'm researching the Tom Cruise running scenes, I'm like, how did they not, as a stunt, just like hire him to be? He's doing the T one thousand. He's totally right? doing it right. And did he ever run like that pre T one thousand? Is he it, it, w- chicken or the egg? Hmm. I, I think. T one thousand pre Tom Cruise running. I didn't come across any research that would suggest one way or the other. Okay. But you can't help but think of Tom Cruise and the T T one thousand. We'll look into that. The T one thousand in Terminator two. Yeah, that's what it's T one thousand. One thousand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Arnold is the T eight hundred. Two. Oh, so he's only two hundred more than Arnold. Yeah. He seems exactly. like he's exponentially more than Arnold with the You'd melting think so. and you think so. the running and the. Right, right. now, Brian's the T one. All right, Club Dread. That's right, the original. <laughs> Thank you, Rex Fisher, for uh, finally making me have some kind of understanding of what Broken Lizard is. Broken Lizard Club. And yes, I did um, laugh out loud a few times. Uh, for me, though, if I'm going to watch a movie like this for laughs, I, I had to say it, but Terrifier and Terrifier 2 is kind of, you know, if, if I'm going to see people being slashed up and I want to kind of laugh, uh, those, those are more, more okay. my speed. Well, thought, like Anderson said, thanks, Rex Fisher, for assigning us Club Dread, for being an assigner, a, a, a repeat assigner, by the way. So thank you, Rex. Always appreciate your uh, contributions. They are uh, worthy of discussion. Take Today is the feature artist of the week. Check them out at AndersonandBrian.com. AndersonandBrian.com, there you go. To do your Amazon tapping. Hey, I'm not going to be here to read uh, the uh, purchases next week. So, hey, in my stead. Think about uh, using that banner link to do all your shopping. If you're sending someone a get well card or flowers in the hospital, you can uh, do that through the Amazon link. Anderson and Brian is the Instagram. Anderson and Brian is the TikTok. There will be new shows next week. N- new shows. New shows will be, uh, we already have one in the can, as they say, with uh, Florence Brummer. That's and right. we do uh, top five red That's light, green light. Like it that. was very good. We, we recorded the Chateau Maman. Uh, that, was a, that was a fun episode that we did last week. And then uh, either Brian and I and Avery or just Avery and I are going to get together and uh, cover uh, the clone Tyrone. And by God, yes. if I... And some beef. If I die in beef. the operating table, 
I'll, uh, I'll live in the film vault because I already pre-recorded next week's episode. Oh, and I'll have seen the 70 millimeter. I live, I die, I live again. And we get to hear your reaction to uh, to the most needless 70 IMAX. millimeter courtroom drama. <laughs> it's kind of what it is. I was like, okay, so I didn't expect a bunch of action sequences, but I expected a little some, more scope, I yeah. think, maybe. They got some, like, you know, riding horses across. I, I got to say, the riding the horses in the uh, in Barbie, way better than the riding the horses yeah. in, uh, yeah. in Oppenheimer. I don't know where to go with this. All right. Continue, sir. Thanks. Uh, the Film Vault's on Twitter. The Film Vault's on Facebook. I just counted six flies. The Film Vault. Do you think I should open the back door so I can let more in or like it let some out? I'll usher them. I'm nervous. I know, I know how to usher them. Okay, good. You're in charge. Thanks to our Patreon listeners, including Rex Fisher. Thanks to Giovanni for the help with the Nolans. Mitch Burns for uh, help with uh, tabulating all the uh, fan flexions. Mike Cole with the gambling. Eric Kath with the YouTubing. Appreciate you guys. That is Antiques. Check out the cool stuff over there and all the other stuff. And until next time. We do it for Van Gogh.